Mark Hamill is one of the most recognizable faces in Hollywood. More specifically, he's being known as Luke Skywalker in the first ever Star Wars trilogy. Or maybe you've heard his voice playing the Joker in multiple Batman medias, such as the Batman animated series or the Arkham video game series. Mark is widely regarded as an amazing actor with a genius way of portraying characters. But how did he get these roles? Stay tuned to find out. If this is a new channel, so be sure to like, subscribe, and let us know which celebrities you want us to cover next down in the comments. Now let's get into it. Mark Hamill was born in Oakland, California on 25th of September in 1951, the fifth of seven children. Growing up, Mark never liked playing in the sandbox or playing with trucks. He always enjoyed acting out his cartoons on TV or playing on a show for his family and friends. He always fascinated by comic books and the Broadway theater. He knew very early on that he wanted to be an actor, although he kept his hopes and dreams to himself due to his military strict father. In 1964, the family relocated to Virginia, California, where Mark attended high school, and it was there that he stepped on stage for the first time. But his time on stage was short-lived due to his father receiving another military transfer all the way in Japan. Mark took this opportunity to expand his vocal acting skills and continue acting in school plays and playing characters such as Snoopy. In 1969, Mark graduated high school and returned to the US and his family settled in San Diego, while Mark moved to LA to pursue his career in acting. He got his first professional gig in Atham E Flat Collider B. Soon after that, Mark enrolled in LA City College where he enrolled as a drama student and got an agent. In the summer of 1970, Mark got his first ever television gig on The Cosby Show. Not as a major character, but still featured his face on TV. Casting agents started to notice Mark's good looks and boyish enthusiasm for acting. He made a dozen singular appearances in TV dramas and sitcoms, but it didn't earn him a living. In 1972, Mark's regular roles began with the soap operas such as General Hospital, which lasted nine months, and even lent his voice for the cartoon I Dream of Genie. In late 1975, George Lucas was casting for a space adventure film, Star Wars. Mark showed up to the audition and made his first round where he was acting alongside Harrison Ford. George Lucas made it very clear that Mark was perfect for the role of Luke Skywalker. This was the challenging role that Mark was yearning for. He thrived in the environment of science fiction and was ready for it to learn more from his veteran actor Alec Guinness. Mark was sure that Star Wars was going to be a huge success at the box office. He would sign on for two more recurring movie roles as Luke Skywalker. While heading to his other gig, Eight is Enough, Mark got into a bad car accident where he injured his face. He endured the surgeries and never looked back. While he was still depressed, he also needed to work on his teeth. And that's how he met his future wife, Marlou York. Mark began to show rapid improvements with his face, his mental health, beside his new girlfriend, and they enjoyed the success of Star Wars openings together. Mark later became a household name. Mark Hamill took on other roles such as high school students trying to recover a stolen car in Corvette Summer. Mark's Star Wars fame would later become a problem for production, as fans would gather from everywhere just to hear Luke Skywalker tell stories about the galaxy. Corvette Summer did poorly in the box office due to bad marketing and getting lost in the jumbled mess of summer blockbuster hits. Mark wanted other roles to challenge his creativity, However, the casting directors couldn't get past the Luke Skywalker image. By 1978, Mark finally got a role that wasn't science fiction, a World War II drama The Big Red One, as a character, Griff, a gifted sharpshooter with a guilty conscience. While the movie didn't do well in the box office, Mark still got praise for his acting. In the 1980s, Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back would bring Luke Skywalker back to the big screen. His more mature, serious tone that he brought for Luke Skywalker was a reflection of his personal life. While filming Star Wars, Marlou had his first child, Nathan Hamill. Another Star Wars film was another huge success. Mark later moved his family to New York, where he began his acting career in Broadway as a lead role in Elephant Man. But soon he was back filming The Return of the Jedi, which by now Mark had fully developed the role as Luke Skywalker and brought the character full circle with the grand finale to the Star Wars trilogy. By 1983, Mark was struggling to escape the typecasting role of Luke Skywalker, but he still kept working as an amazing Broadway theater star. He started working in multiple Broadway shows that saw him sing and dance in shows like Harrington and Hart and The Nerd. He would take a five-year absence from Hollywood to raise his children. By 1988, he was casted in Slipstream as a villain role. This new character choice was well received. So well, in fact, that he was casted for the role of the Joker in the Batman animated series. Soon after that, Mark would become one of the most sought after voice actors in all of Hollywood. Today, Mark Hamill thrives in villain roles and even revised his character in the heavily criticized Force Awakens trilogy. So, what happens next? Well, we'll soon have to find out. Thank you guys for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, and let us know what you want us to feature next. Later.